بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نتمنى الصحة والسلامة للجميع إن شاء الله and we will start our lecture about COVID and pregnancy to start with the objective of this lecture to describe the fetal and maternal effect of COVID-19, list the investigations and treatment options, summarize the precautions required to prevent the infection, and predict the time and mode of delivery of an affected pregnant woman. The virus, the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, is a new strain of coronavirus causing COVID-19, first identified in Wuhan City in China in 2019. Usually causes mild to moderate upper respiratory tract illnesses like the common cold, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and the severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS. The transmission, most cases of COVID-19 have evidence of a human-to-human -human transmission. And these could be by two routes, the direct route, by contact with an infected person within two meters, with respiratory secretions which can enter the eyes, mouth, nose, or the airways, and the risk increases as long as contact with an infected person who has symptoms. So when you go out, you should keep at least two meters as a precaution with other personnel, and those who are caring for an infected person should take an extra precautions to prevent such a transmission. The second route is indirectly via touching a surface object or a hand of an infected person contaminated with the respiratory secretions and then touching the mouth, nose, or the eyes. Transmission in a pregnancy. Pregnant women do not appear to be more likely to contract the infection than the general population. But the problem with the pregnancy is that it alters the body immune system some sort of immune suppression is seen in a pregnancy so to prevent the rejection of the fetus. And this may result in more severe symptoms, not only with, with coronavirus, but with other viruses also. There is evidence of vertical transmission from the mother to the baby antenatally or intrapartum, and this is possible. And two reports have published evidence of IgM for SARS-CoV-2 in the neonatal serum at birth, as we know that this immunoglobulin is of large molecule, so it is mostly of fetal origin, not from the mother. Effect on a pregnant woman. We can reassure the woman that is worrying about getting the infection that the majority of cases are asymptomatic and or developing only mild symptoms that passes unnoticed. Most women will experience only mild to moderate cold or flu-like symptoms, cough, fever, shortness of breath, headache, and anthemia are irrelevant symptoms. More severe symptoms such as pneumonia, marked hypoxia, are seen in those who are older people, the immune-suppressed individuals, and those with long-term conditions such as diabetes, cancer, and chronic lung disease. Put in mind that the pregnant woman may also develop such severe complication. But the absolute risks are low. Another effect on pregnant women is the risk of a preterm birth after the 28 weeks, and in some reports, it is an iatrogenic preterm birth indicated for maternal wise in a critically ill patient. Again, there is increased risk of maternal venous thromboembolism with reduced mobility at home or hospital admission is likely to increase the risk pattern with the resultant maternal mor morbidity and mortality. According to the WHO report that looked a small sample of a pregnant woman with COVID-19, of the 147 women studied, 
8% of them had severe disease and 1% critical. Another case series from New York of 43 women testing positive for COVID had a similar pattern of disease severity to the non-pregnant individuals. 86% mild, 9% severe, and 5% critical cases. And still, the virus is evolving, and the, the exact course and the significance of its infection is still to be evaluated with more studies and involving uh, larger communities. Effects on the fetus. Currently, there are no data suggesting an increased risk of miscarriage, although high fever in the first trimester from any cause, not only from COVID, may result in birth defects. Again, no evidence of teratogenicity of this virus. The virus can be transmitted vertically to the fetus, but still the, the pregnancy is affected and the significance of this infection is still to be determined. There is a risk of a prematurity and due to most iatrogenic birth, so the premature neonate may have respiratory, GIT, and neurological problems. There will be evidence in some reports of fetal compromise and a preterm pre labor rupture of membranes in at least one report. The incubation period of the virus is between 2 to 14 days, so the isolation is recommended for two weeks. But infected persons can transmit the virus via close contact and respiratory droplets even before they become symptomatic. And this is an important route for the dissemination of the disease in the community. The diagnosis of COVID infection, the main clinical manifestations, fever, fatigue, myalgia, dry cough, shortness of breath. Few patients may present with nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, hemoptysis, or diarrhea. Put in mind, the asymptomatic cases are even more than these. Peripheral white blood cell count is normal or decreased in early stages. And the lymphocyte count, as it is a viral infection, may be reduced. C, reactive a protein, which is an unspecific marker of infection, may be increased. Some patients may have mild thrombocytopenia, and elevated liver enzymes and creatinine kinase may be seen. A computed tomography of the chest is the most useful investigation to confirm or rule out viral pneumonia, and should be performed in every case suspected of having the disease as the risk of radiation exposure to the fetus is very small. The sensitivity of chest CT scan is 98% versus 71% for real-time PCR. Another investigation, we should take a blood cultures for bacteria that can be a cause for pneumonia and to direct the antimicrobial therapy. We are continuing the diagnosis the SARS-CoV-2, we can detect is nucleic acid by real-time polymerase chain reaction, and the specimens can be taken from the saliva, from upper respiratory tract, and even from lower respiratory tract or other body secretions. Repeated testing may be required to confirm the diagnosis, and if the SARS-CoV-2 nucleic acid not detected, in samples of respiratory tract on two consecutive occasions, at least 24 hours apart, COVID can be ruled out. Serology can only be used if the PCR is not available. And put in mind for serious CL patients, screen for other respiratory infections, for example, other viruses, bacterial pneumonia, chlamydia, mycoplasma pneumonia. The treatment Pregnant women suspected with COVID should be isolated and investigated. Those diagnosed with infection should be admitted to a negative pressure isolation ward, and a multidisciplinary expertise should be involved in the management of a critically ill patient. Those patients should be triaged and stratified into mild, whom the symptoms are mild and stable vital signs, 
Severe cases when there is tachypnea, more than or equal 30 per minute. Resting oxygen saturation equal or less than 93% and reduction in the oxygen pressure. Critical cases when there is shock with organ failure or respiratory failure requiring mechanical ventilation or intubation. A multidisciplinary team of midwife, obstetrician, specialist in intensive care medicine, microbiologist, and anesthetist should be involved in addition to the neonatologist. A medical staff caring for COVID-19 should use the protective, personal protective equipment, including gowns, N95 masks, googles, and gloves. Supportive therapy, adequate rest, hydration, taking uh, adequate amount of fluid, nutritional supports, especially vitamin C, water and electrolyte balance should be ensured. Acetaminophen is indicated to reduce the temperature in case of fever. And it is essential to monitor the vital signs, oxygen saturation closely. Depending on the severity of the disease, those with severe disease may require supplemental oxygen inhalation via a nasal cannula, depending on the severity of hypoxemia. Intubation and mechanical ventilation or even extracorporeal membrane oxygenation may be required to maintain the oxygenation. Other complications should be put it in mind, septic shock, kidney injury, uh, cardiac injury, so that it is important that we check the arterial blood gas lactate, renal function, liver function, cardiac enzymes according to the clinical situation. The antiviral treatment. Antiviral treatment has been used in China and also recommended for a pregnant woman. The combination therapy with antiproteases, lopinavir, ritonavir have been used and uh, they are safe in pregnancy. WHO advises caution and careful risk-benefit analysis before using any drugs for a pregnant woman, remdesivir, a nucleotide uh, analog, and the chloroquine, which is an anti-malarial drug, has been shown to be effective against COVID in vitro. And a lot of the clinical trials are now going on regarding the effect of chloroquine. The chloroquine has not being formally assigned to a pregnancy category by the FDA. There are no controlled data in human pregnancies. However, chloroquine has been used in the prophylaxis and treatment of malaria during pregnancy without evidence of fetal harm. The antibacterial treatment. Antibiotics are indicated if there is evidence of secondary bacterial infection. In this case, they should be given without delay. Intravenous ceftriaxone can be administered initially and then according to the culture and sensitivity results. The corticosteroid therapy, in general, these are not recommended as they delay the virus clearance from the body. However, a short term, three to five days of methylprednisolone can be given if the patient having dyspnea and hypoxemia to minimize the lung inflammation and prevent acute respiratory distress syndrome. Betamethasone, 12 mg intramuscularly, followed by another dose 24 hours later, can be considered to promote fetal lung maturity when the woman is expecting to deliver before 34 weeks gestation. Advice for a pregnant woman. We can reassure that the pregnant woman can have uh, without, can be without symptoms or even a mild illness that she can recover from it uh, fully. If the patient develops severe symptoms or the recovery is delayed, she should consult uh, an enhanced care. The pregnant woman should be engaged in a social distancing measures to reduce the risk of infection. And women above 28 weeks are recommended to particularly attentive to social distancing and minimizing the contact with the others due to increased risk from this disease in the last trimester of pregnancy. The social distancing guidance, stay at home, only go outside for food, 
health reasons and work if you are, cannot work from home. If you go home, stay two meters or six feet away from other people at all times. Wash your hand as soon as you get home. Do not meet others, even friends or family. And this is an important advice is that you can spread the virus even if you don't have symptoms. So a special uh, advice to the, those who are caring uh, for uninfected individuals or those who are a medical staff should keep avoidance of contact with uh, other members of the family who are old age or liable for serious illness. Women at high risk, pregnant women with heart disease, whether congenital or acquired, individuals with specific cancers, severe respiratory conditions such as cystic fibrosis, severe asthma, those with rare disease and inborn error of metabolism having an increased risk of serious infections such as sickle cell disease. For those women who are at high risk, the guidance should be more strict that they should avoid contact with anyone who having any symptoms suggestive of COVID. They should not leave home. They should not attend any gatherings with their family, weddings, and any uh, other uh, services. Don't go for shopping, leisure, or travel. And in case of arranging food or medication, they should be left at the door to minimize the contact. Keep in touch using remote technology, such as phone, internet, and social media to contact your doctor when you need any advice. Advice for a pregnant woman asking about the clinic and the antenatal visit. If the woman in the low risk population, that is she doesn't have any problem in the current or previous pregnancy, she can phone her uh, doctor and she has a delay in the appointment for another uh, date or another time. But if the patient is in the risky group that any risk that affecting her life or her baby, she should attend the antenatal visit in time. The maternity units are doing everything that minimizes the spread of coronavirus to the healthy woman. And you should not be deferred from coming to the hospital for any reason. If anyone having household contact symptoms suggestive of COVID, they should not attend the routine clinic. Only phone your doctor and they will arrange the right time and the place to come to the visit. Keep the number of people with you to one and avoid bringing children. Smoking, the patients who are smokers may have a more risk of severe disease, so there is a need to stop the smoking as soon as possible. Maternal mental well-being, a lot of anxieties at such time, and this could be due to the COVID infection itself, the impact of social isolation on the emotional and psychological state of the pregnant woman, the potential of reduced household finances, the income of the family is affected at such time. So again, this will make an impact on the psychological health of the woman. And the, during the coronavirus epidemic, there was an increase in the risk of domestic violence. So these should be put in mind when dealing with a pregnant woman at such time. The timing of delivery. Timing of delivery should be individualized based on the disease severity, the existing comorbidities, obstetric history, and gestational age and fetal condition. In mild and stable cases, and uh, responding to treatment in the absence of fetal compromise, pregnancy can be continued to term under close supervision. Term, which means between 37 weeks to 42 uh, weeks gestation. That is the uh, nine months of pregnancy. Regular monitoring of the vital signs, oxygen saturation, and assessment of electrolyte, fluid balance, blood gas is required in addition to ultrasound examination of the fetus and fetal heart rate monitoring is recommended. In the critical cases, continuing pregnancy may endanger the safety of the mother and her fetus. In such situations, delivery may be indicated for maternal wise, and this may result in iatrogenic prematurity to the fetus. So 
uh, steroids can be given to enhance the lung maturity. And after consultation, the patient and her family about the time of delivery. This is a common question that we face it. If I have COVID-19 at time of delivery, will I need a cesarean section? Whether to deliver vaginally or by cesarean section depends on a lot of factors and not only having COVID-19. A vaginal delivery is favorable to cesarean delivery, provided that the patients are eligible for vaginal delivery and aren't recommended for cesarean section. For example, previous two and four cesarean sections, this woman should be delivered by cesarean section. Performing surgery in a body already weakened with serious virus may cause additional complications. Another question, can the coronavirus pass through the breast milk? In the few studies performed, it revealed no risk of breast milk transmission. But if the woman chooses to breastfeed her baby, and this what we encourage for, Precautions to limit the baby exposure to the virus, wearing the face mask, washing the hands thoroughly before touching the baby, and get attention to the nails and the webbing of the fingers, washing hands thoroughly before handling the breast pump or the bottle. If the woman is ill, the bottle milk, considering having someone as well, and give the baby a bottle milk of expressed breast milk until the mother become well and then she can withhold her baby. Thank you so much.